Welcome to the show. My name is Mariah Falabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, YK in the building. Yo, 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 good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to be here. Good well, to be here. All three of us have a church of green. Only Munima yeah, did not get the I, memo. I think oh, it was more like yes, blue. Yes, yes, yes. Is this blue? This is like green, no? Some kind See, of... It's blue. blue. Is it blue? Yes, it's ah, blue. blue. Damn. <laughs> so maybe you're colorblind. <laughs> I could have sworn I was wearing green. I could have sworn I was wearing green. How are you doing, YK? I'm fine, I'm fine, oh. Getting ready for celebration. Yeah, so once yeah. October comes like this, you yeah. shut down. Uh, 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 um, the debate is next week, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday. Yeah, oh. but this week we have the um, we have the art competition, which is Thursday. The dance competition, which is Friday, and for the first time ever, the dress fella, which is on Sunday. Ah. I'll send you your e invites. I keep meaning yeah. to do it, but yeah. things. What's um, the, dress fella? the dress fella, you're going to dress. We have uh, it's a competition fashion. We have I think eight. Fashion houses, mm -hmm. new new young young ones, you know. Upcoming. They're going to be dressing what their idea of fella before, now, how they think fella would have dressed mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. now, tomorrow, thing. and as a woman for ah. outfits. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that'll be interesting to watch. Yes, yeah, I'd yeah. love to be there on Sunday. Yeah, so that it's at Freedom Park on, on, Sunday? on Sunday. Sunday morning. No, Sunday afternoon. afternoon. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. Mm. For those of us that go to church. Exactly. Yeah, because of exactly. us. We had to think of us. Yeah, we had to, to think of us. But <laughs> yeah, Wednesday, we're going to be there for the debate by God's grace. Yeah, yes, that's yes. next week. Next Wednesday, yeah, yes. Yeah, we'll yeah, be there for the debate. Um, Good. Hello, Nima Akashad. You still enjoy your bangles? I am. Uh, you know me. If you give yes, me a sir. gift, you yes, will sir. see it. Yes. You that give me, you will see it. You know, say yes. Who don't you see it? One of our London gifts. Who doesn't wear their gift? Some people don't mind it, Nima. But when I have, when I get gifts, gifts. No matter what, no matter, we all wear our we all gifts. Wear our okay, gifts. I don't, I don't know. Sorry if you offended you. We are all, we are wearing gifts well, anyway. You know me, like only like oh, you're the only person. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So <laughs> we all do the same things. <laughs> How are you doing, Nima? I'm fine. Um, I'm a bit overworked, tired, cause there's traffic. Mm. The construction on Badagri Expressway. They've been so many blocks that they have had to do. There's traffic management rule to go, but it's so tough. Getting home and getting out of the house is tough for me. I would love that there's also proper management on the Uroshoki end. Somebody is, you know, they're compelling those downfall buses to move because now we have only one lane and you can't park on two of those lanes and, and think it's okay for those coming behind. We spend hours on necessary day. The roads are under construction and it must affect everybody. That's the most important thing. It's not, they are not exempted from the block on the road. So you can't park there. At least if you must pick mm. up somebody, pick one person and move and don't stay. I, yeah. I, I wish that, you know, there will be more traffic okay. management. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm, I'm doing good. Yes, I just I had a short meeting yesterday at Loma, um, trying to see what we can do going forward with Loma Academy. It was a fantastic Loma meeting. Loma Academy? Yes. Mm, so Loma have this school that they ha um, mm. where they teach children about the environment, about recycling, about environmental sustainability, just so in keeping with, you know, what I do. They looked at our book. They think it's a fantastic addition to, you know, the books that they introduce to children that when they talk right. to them about the environment. And as I always say, the vultures are the llama right. of the environment. So it was just... You know, fantastic Perfect marriage. Yes. So you guys have like a so marriage. So very plan. soon, you have some kind of synergy. Yeah. Ah. So very soon, you will be seeing some things that we'll be doing together. Ah, oh, fantastic! Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm I excited that. about that. Oh, good, great, great, great. <laughs> and oh, you? I'm just fine. Yeah, I'm just fine. <laughs> Your dress is very nice, actually. Thank you. you. Thank you. I didn't like the net thingy. I think it's a bit too. You know, it's not nice. necessary. It's, I didn't it, need it. It makes it different. It gives you that. It was not necessary. The puff was perfect. No, it's necessary. It's, it gives it that, you know, that... She does not appreciate oh. creativity. Anyways, you know let that me go. Like you don't. Save your energy. Let's, yes. go. let's just save our energy for the next. <laughs> let's start a <laughs> break. Then we come back. We go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Before we go ahead, Baike had something to say? Yes, yeah, so please, Nima has rights. <laughs> Nima has rights, yeah. Last case. Where do you really think you pick should your case like, now? Like, like, Why do you pick your case? <laughs> <laughs> Let us review the papers. Please, Nima has rights. <laughs> 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 Let's start with the nation. Mbawa no ni rights. Let's start with the nation. Let's see, guys, Tuesday. Let's be serious. Let's start with the nation. 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 Let's start with the nation.
Don't plunge Nigeria into crisis, can Sultan one religious leaders? <laughs> Federal government reverses order urging visas to open, reopen varsities. 500,000 Nigerians await repatriation from Niger, Chad, and Cameroon. Tinubu Shetima joint ticket best for women. Atiku bypasses WK allies, names Saraki Oyinola and his advisors. And bandits kill three kidnapped 22 in Kaduna communities. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so I will talk about um, the wife of the APC presidential candidate, um, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, at the um, at Sh at Shiwaju Women Cooperative Society um, dialogue yesterday. She was represented by Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Diaspora, Mrs. Tolu Lokwe Akondi Shadikwe. And she was just saying that um, the senator's um, sentiment were, was that the candidacy of her husband and his running mate, Shatima, uh, is very important for women um, representation. She says that both of them really stand for women empowerment. She gave examples of um, her husband as governor and all the things that he's done for women. She said he's mentored scores of women, provided um, economic empowerment for women, uh, you know, brought about the mainstreaming of women, you know, not only in economics, but in, politica in the political sphere. She says that he's not only a political, you know, team player, but also at home, you can see that um, for her, as the, as the wife and a yeah. three-time senator, you know, at the um, how, um, the uh, at the national assembly, it shows his commitment to empowering women, and so does Shatima. Shatima too has a track record of wanting to make sure that there's proper representation of women, and she just says women are very important in politics generally. Mm. They are there from the very beginning, the voting and everything. And mm. these two people are very mm. aware of our power and are willing to make sure that incorporated in the whole process. Governor Akere Dolu of Undo State has reiterated that Amotekun must carry weapons. He was saying this during the personal parade yesterday um, in Undo. He says that um, the weapons which will be backed by law, so he's not going against the law, will be backed by law, uh, will be used to fight those who are termed as marauders, committing crimes against humanity, especially within the region of his state. He said that... Um, the establishment of the security office by the sub-nations, sub-nationals was necessary and indispensable. And he said that the Amoteco Corps must be given the tools to carry out their um, pivotal, indispensable duties. He questioned the fact that the Castilian state government were displaying the AK-47 to their security office. And it's important that he also is able to. But I'm just wondering that why is he speaking alone? There should be other governors no, we echoing all, this all and support, uh, supporting this because it's, it's not Amoteco is not just for this state. Yes. So the entire South yes, region. So other governors within that region Mark should Indian also support supported what he's saying. Him. Other he governors have spoken up in support of him. But I won't say he's, um, he's doing well for being so consistent on what he believes. And, yes. You know, and okay, I guess because I, I still cannot understand why you would allow the Katsina state, state government um, security uh, display their own yeah. AK for I mean, you're not allowing this one. Yeah. It's, you know, so, too. Is that two systems, one country? Mm, yeah. Okay, another the, story the, in the nation? The Federal Commissioner at the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, um, Iman, Ms. Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, was speaking to the um, NAN, that's the Nigerian Agency of, um, News, Agency, News Agency of Nigeria, at the UN General Assembly 77 session happening in the US recently. And she was talking about how we have 500 thousand awaiting um, persons, displaced persons in Chad, Cameroon, and they are awaiting repatriation to Nigeria. Mm. She said they're in this, um, Niger, Chad, and Cameroon, these three countries, and that they've been bringing them back in batches. There's 1,000 people that are awaiting repatriation presently, mm. and that all of that will be done in accordance with um, the presidential committee or repatriation in the Northeast, and they'll be done before the end of the tenure of Mr. President. So I'm wondering how many days remain, but I, I wonder how they will successfully do the repatriation of that 500,000 person. I also wonder where the data is mm. and what they are relying on. So I read the story, Shaf. That's what she was speaking of on at the... Okay, UN moving on to the punch. 24 mm. hours to campaign. INEC can Sultan wants party supporters against violence. Mm. Picture here again of Governor Akiri Dulu. Amoteko insists on arms. I mean, I like the way he is in his ensemble. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Sick sexagenarian. This almost family dies in Lagos apartment.
Sad. Okay, communities lament 100 year darkness, electricity projects rot. ICPC sets up committee to manage forfeited assets. Article name Saraki, I am other special advisors. Groups demand sanction as power collapses within the um, seventh time. And the federal government um, reverses our varsity's reopening order as to adamant. Okay, which story are we starting with? Yeah, so okay. let me start with the sick um, sex sexagenarian. Um, her name is Rose Ackman. She apparently, according to her neighbors, she disowned her family and then she fell ill. And she started, she had arthritis and then she got a stroke. She couldn't walk. So they took it in turns to um, take, care of, take care of her, change her diapers. And then she would, um, then a week before she died, they took her to the hospital. And she, uh, the hospital, the Baganda General Hospital said that they didn't have space, mm -hmm. space. So they now took her to a private hospital. Those was asked for her family. They said they didn't know her family mm -hmm. members. So they said they couldn't admit her. They took her home. And then the person that was her turn to clean her that day went there and she was dead. That one ran to the police station, Kmiluko, so that you will not say. Uh -oh. And the police came. Um, they, they took her. They've taken her corpse to the morgue, but they, her family have now come. Okay. And they're saying, where were you all this time, you know? Mm -hmm. Her husband left her 10 years ago. Very, very sad story. Very, very, very sad yeah. story. Especially for this part. But I love the way the neighbors rallied around, around her. her. Okay. Yeah. Support her. Really, sir. Yes, um, the, the national grid collapsed again yesterday. Yes, so did it affect you? Yes, yeah, it affected me. Affected anyway, it. everybody is screaming and shouting. So they said this is the seventh time that it has happened in 2022 alone. So um, according to the report, it's saying that um, power consumer groups have called for sanctions against the operators and firms culpable for the incessant grid collapse that has characterized the Nigeria's electricity system since that's this year. Um, they said that on Monday, the power generation on the grid had risen to a peak of 4,180 megawatts, and then on Sunday, it dropped to a little above 3,713 um, 3, at 6 a.m. before crashing to about 80 megawatts yesterday so various power distribution companies you know confirmed this mm -hmm. they at the time they reached out to their consumers their clients saying that um, this had been caused by the national grid collapse mm -hmm. but at the time that they reached out they hadn't heard you know specifically also that uh, what has happened and how long this will take and what the so, situation is this is what the minister for power had to say about mm -hmm. that he said that you know the system the grid has never collapsed Mm -hmm. He said that what happened were system disturbances. He says that it is mischievous and misleading for yes, anyone to say Nigeria has experienced grid collapses five times this year. That, you know, what we have experienced are pockets of national grid system disturbances. And in, in all, each lasted for just about 30 minutes and the grid was restored to normalcy instantly. Is wet. Mm. But for what we are experiencing mm -hmm. in the past two weeks, I'm not finding it funny. I am under a disco. I used to be proud. But now, now it's so difficult to get... Echo disco now. Echo. We have it's, to go on a break. It's difficult right? to get six hours of power. This is what they say. You so, say tomato and I say tomato. Hey, I'm telling you. Let's go on a break. When we come back, to continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. For staying with us, we're still reviewing the punch. So, okay. uh, Nima had a story. Yes, punch? I have yeah, the 500. Um, five, um, sorry, the several that communities, was initial. The several communities <laughs> in Ogun State who said they've been in darkness for 100 years that they've never had power. And the communities are listed, there's so many. Malagbada, Fayoyi, Ajegunle, Rikwa, one, Erikwa, two, Abule, Babala, Sunwa, Ajegunle. There's so many. All those communities in Yewa. North local government area said that they've never had power in a hundred years. And there's a World Bank electrification project in their area that has been abandoned. And this, this would have, you know, sort of um, assisted them to getting power. 
That's the basis of the story. Simple and short. A hundred okay. years. And, and that, no, you, you forgot to say they brought the thing in 2007, yes. saying that the they wanted to. World Bank project. They, so they, everyone was excited, like, and then they didn't. Since it. that 2007 till now, they are still in darkness. Okay, so major stakeholders, INEC, Khan, Sultan, and many others, have warned party supporters to avoid violence during the coming elections by tomorrow. Officially, mm, the game starts. So what's 2023? Mm. And then INEC is saying, uh, let me read specifically from Yakubu, the chairman of INEC, Mahmoud Yakub said that abusive and slanderous words could provoke violence during the campaigns and we must, be avo we must avoid that. He added that um, uh, abusive, intemperate, slanderous, or base language, or innuendos designed or likely to provoke violence, reactions, or emotions shall not be employed during the elections and would not be allowed. He uh, further reiterated his position during the sensitization to ensure that they're going to have a free and fair election, that nobody should, we should, that one, we should just know that we have, have a free and fair election. But he ensure, ensure that we should reduce violence, not, not even have violence at all. Mm -hmm. I think this is also reiterated by, the, by Governor Sowell doing the... Um, NIREC meeting, that was a Nigerian Interreligious Council. They had a meeting mm -hmm. in Lagos yesterday where they had to come to sit down together and say, listen, we are religious leaders. We're not going to allow all these um, negativity, I'm, I'm paraphrasing yeah. right now, um, that people are using the religion Worse. to divide. So I think it's clear that we must all uphold a sanity during this period of elections and let us, re re let us avoid also. slanderous words against each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on quickly now to Daily Sun. 2023 APC presidential campaign crisis widens as will FG makes U-turn on resumption order. Blackout as grid, national grid collapses again. Bandits threaten to kill newborn mother sisters if 50 million naira ransom is not paid within 48 hours. 2023 again, OB gets pan Yoruba group's endorsement. Um, 2023 polls INEC to deploy cumbersome measures to determine winners call for issue-based campaigns. Nam the Kano's release crucial to peace in South East says APC chief. And article storms Enugu as Southeast receives Okowa as Igbo son today. Right, which story are we starting with? So I have this really sad, heartbreaking story. So um, it's about three sisters that were kidnapped in July um, 17th this year. They, were, they said they were kidnapped in Mando, that's the outskirts of Kaduna. They had gone to their mother and they were taking care of their sick mom. And bandits came and took them away, three of them. One of them was heavily pregnant at the time she was kidnapped. Um, the brother said that since then they've been in talks with the kidnappers who at first had asked for, you know, they, they, they asked for um, 100 million at first. And they said that they were not able to raise that they're poor people. This is not an amount of money that they can raise. Anyway, they've reduced the amount all the way down to 50 million. They said they have sold everything that they own and all that they can give and all they have gathered is 6.5 million they spoke to the bandits and the bandits say that they should not call them again and that if they do not give them 50 million by the end of tomorrow they would mm. kill the sisters and the newborn child the newborn was born in captivity they said no medicine no any health um, intervention no sins and that you know they've just been left to the elements they just he said he was on the phone with his sisters. They were all crying because he said this is all they have been able to raise mm -hmm. and asking governments to uh, They said um, they're, they're asking governments, well, meaning Nigerians, Nigerians churches, everybody. Because the first money they asked for was 140 million. Mm -hmm. Then 100. 100. Now they've reduced it to 50. They said their leader is about to leave the camp. Mm -hmm. So they need the money before the leader leaves the camp. Very, it's just, very, very sad. So sad. That's the way you cut these guys. You just, you just kill them. Don't, 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 you, you trial know? and going for trial. Just shut them dead. I, I, I met a lady who lives in Kaduna, and she's lived in Kaduna all her life. She's from, she's Yoruba, but she lives in Kaduna now. She's a fan of the show. And she says how dangerous Kaduna is now. Mm -hmm. Southern you Kaduna. Know, Just Kaduna. Know, she's, and, you know, they knock on your doors. They, they really, really, she, yeah, for yeah. the Did Christians. you read the part where really, this really sad. kidnap kingpin arrested, that when he was paraded, when he said he didn't know his gang did, were involved in kidnapping? Kidnap he kidnap said he didn't know that they, they were, were involved in kidnapping. Yeah. Right. Okay, so um, the former pres vice president of Nigeria, Alaji Atitiku Abubakar, who is also the presidential candidate for the PDP, will be at the southeast in Enugu um, today. He'll be visiting um, 
They're going to have a consultation and sensitization ahead of the elections to start the campaign that's starting tomorrow. And he will be officially presenting Dr. Ifa Yokoa, um, his running mate, to um, the South East PDP chapter. You know, so according to them, they will be welcoming, welcoming him as their son, um, officially. He says that um, he's coming home to facilitate with his own kinsmen. Um, sources reveal the article deliberately scheduled, scheduled the stakeholders meeting obviously because the campaigns will start and the idea is really to um, gather the southeasterners under the PDP uh, party to <laughs> accept uh, Okoa as one of their own as before, before this campaign starts officially tomorrow. Mm. Any other story? Nobody took. Okay, let's move on now to Vanguard. Let's find a story we've not taken. 2023 presidency, Yoruba elders split over Obi and Tinumbu. 2023, guard your utterances, FG Sultan Khan, someone who tells Nigerians. Strike, FG makes U-turn on the opening of varsities. Pipeline surveillance contract, all stakeholders should work together for Niger Delta, says Edwin Clark. Tinubu begins campaigns with prayers, peace talks in Abuja tomorrow. Uh, 2023, INEC, NBC, others, read route, act, one against anti-peace activities. Ex-servicemen storm defense ministry. Protest on paid benefits. Mm. 2023, consider mental fitness of um, candidates and bandits kill three, kidnap 22, snatch bikes in Berin, Benin Gwari in council. Okay, which story are we doing? So, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Wabubakar, who is also the leader of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, was at the third quarter meeting of the Nigeria Interreligious Council that I held in Victoria Island yesterday. Also in attendance was the governor of Lagos, the, um, the SGF, the Secretary of the Federal Government was represented, and um, the president of CAN, that's the Christian Association of Nigeria, Daniel Loco, also was present. And they were talking about, you know, how volatile this season that we're going into now, pre-election or election campaign season will be. And they're asking Nigerians to not only be careful about, you know, how they comport themselves, but guard, you know, their utterances from incitive and, you know, all sorts of comments at this time. I totally agree with everybody because the Sultan was saying the same thing. The current president was agreeing with him. Other parties that were in attendance were taking and agreeing with him in, in different um, ways. But, you know, they were all saying the same thing and I agree with them. At this time, this is when we should be more careful about any of such utterances and guard what we're saying. Yeah. So yesterday, um, the, the retired military personnel stormed the Ministry of Defense were pro protesting non-payment of their security debarment allowance, which they call SDA, and they threatened not to leave the place until government um, addresses their plight. So these ex-soldiers, under the ages of retired members of the Nigerian Armed Forces, REMENAF, that's R-E-M-E-N-A-F, and the Coalition of Concerned Military Veterans, CCV, CCV they said that... Um, uh, they had in January, you know, protested and, um, and picketed the ministries of finance, defense and the National Assembly so that, um, you know, the allowances could be paid and that the uh, president had them and he approved the payment of the debarment allowances. But they said up till today, the Ministry of Defense hadn't done anything. They're also alleging that the Minister of Defense is the one holding on to these monies that... Uh, um, he doesn't seem to have any empathy for their plight. And so they had come with their mats and they were willing, even in the rain, to sleep over until they have been addressed. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we take a part two of the, um, our hot topic yesterday, which is about the kidnap kingpin, um, the updates on that. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us in continuation of yesterday's topic on the alleged king, kidnap kingpin, Leon Ewa.
we have the Commissioner of Police in Bayelsa State, Mr. Ben Okolo, to speak extensively on what the public needs to know concerning this particular kidnap kingpin and the case going forward. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. So, as you, as you know, social media, when uh, uh, I mean, we anywhere. had so much information on this person, but it would be great to have it from a credible source such as you. So, could you kindly give us an update on this Leon Ewa that was arrested recently over the weekend? Um, how, um, what, what's the case and exactly how are you going to charge him to court? What are the next steps? Um, at the end of last year, uh, what I did was kidnapped. The F was a bank manager of one of the new generation banks. Uh, he was released after they collected ransom of 80 million naira. Mm. And in June in this year, another banker, uh, or major, was now he's equally a manager of the new generation bank. He was released after they collected 60 million naira. Collected 30 million naira cash and 30,000 uh, 30 million what of uh, dollars. Mm -mm. Uh, we continued to follow up and narrow on the syndicate that committed this crime. So first we arrested one Emmanuel Charles and Gasser. It was the arrest of Charles and Gasser, Innocent Kesley and Timmy Kurikumo that led to the, kid, uh, the arrest of uh, John Ikechukupel. So he ran away from Payelsa when his cohorts uh, rounded up. He ran to Udu from Udu, he went to Abuja. So he was picked from Abuja. Um, they gave him shares of the money. But he claims that he only showed them the house of but the other people are saying, the other criminals are saying, no, you brought this job. Hmm. So but hmm. whatever it is, he is a member of that guy. So it's a very clear case of kidnapping. You see a video which himself circulated where he was showing dollars. Hmm. In yes. this last one, he was giving $10,000. Hmm. It was what? Giving $10,000. Yes. Hmm. So, and you were saying hustle. Okay. So right. <laughs> okay, let me get a few more questions for you. Go ahead. Okay, sir. So a lot of us saw, you know, the, um, where they had come to arrest him and were looking at them being paraded. But what happens next? Because usually that's where Nigerians always feel that we don't get the full story. So what happens next? Do they go to court? Or with cases like this that seem so clear-cut and so open, how does it end? Mm. And how soon? So fast. Uh, we are working in close synergy with the Attorney General of the State. As soon as we conclude investigations, that will be very soon. And then we will conclude investigations to ensure that they face the full round of the law. So that is the situation. So, so um, concerning this issue of kidnapping, sir, I'm quite concerned. The fact that these guys were they were able to do this through the bank. Now, what advice would you give to regular Nigerians to avoid or to become them, to avoid being victims yes. like this other ones in this case? Um, I think, first of all, we need, when you see something, say something. Mm. Uh, it has been said in several forums. For the last kidnap, somebody living with victim saw the guy. He took the number. But he didn't raise a lot. The car came in the morning. In the night, evening when they kidnapped, uh, kidnapped the man, the same car came back. So if he has raised a lot in the morning or informed uh, his master of the development, we may have done something proactive to forestall it. So I would say that if you see anything unusual, usual movements around the surroundings, people who with no faces and all that, it mm. has to be properly interrogated. Okay. So 
part of what we do is to ensure that we monitor what happens around us. That's one. Secondly, uh, we will try as much as possible uh, not to show things that will attract people to come and do. You know, lifestyle sometimes is good. I'm not talking about this particular case anyway. But if you live a moderate life, sometimes it's going to help. But I think most of all, uh, the best thing to do is to ensure that you are very, very, very conscious of happenings around so that you know when to tell the police or any other security agents of happenings around you that need to be checked out. Mm. Mm. Um, in, in this case, like what Mariah was asking, there was no way the guy could have avoided it. The, the information came from the bank, how much he had in his account. Somebody working in the, the bank, bank must have told them, oh, he has this amount. If you kidnap him, he can pay. pay. So how do you avoid, <laughs> unless you stop saving in the bank? Because now, from, from this uh, story, somebody in the bank is, um, is, is an, uh, an accomplice. Yes, accomplice. Yes, yes. Accomplices, yes. Accomplices, you're right. Did you hear that? Um, what, uh, that's the correct one uh, impression. He was a former staff of a new generation bank. Yeah. They laid him off since 2003. They caught him that he was pilfering. You know, sometimes customers go home, the money bundles mm. will not be complete. Mm -hmm. So they set CCTV and caught him that he was pilfering. So I think maybe he's doing it because of lifestyle or vendetta or whatever. He's actually no more working in the bank. So it's not that he's a bank star, no. Okay. But he has knowledge of the people where they need the and all that. So if there are residents that he actually monitor. So, so that is it. All right, go ahead. Okay, so what Waiki was trying to ask earlier is that, you know, for, he, for them to demand the ransom that they demanded, they were very certain as to the balance that was in the account of their victims at the time, which shows that there's assistance from within. You know, I don't know if your investigation got to that part, if you're able to find out, you know, more. Uh, we are still investigating. However, when kidnappers take somebody, it's not in all cases that they walk the amount in the bank. They may know that the person can get money from a lot of sources or have a property to sell and so on and so forth. So most times it's not just about what you have in your account. Mm. I am sure that these bankers don't have much in their account. Friends, relatives raise the money for them. Mm. All right, there's, there's a, we hear that there is a law against parading of um, suspects because we've seen police constantly parading people and we're thinking, is it right? I mean, you expect somebody, yeah, what, what was that in the same though? Mm. You have innocent, innocent to be guilty. Somebody, yes. So do, is it right to parade these suspects, at least until, until we are sure that they're actually uh, convicted of the crime they've been accused of? Without uh, being a uh, I know that there is that law. However, this particular case has generated a lot of Misinformation, disinformation in the social media, and there was need to clear certain aspects of it. One is a confirm. Two is just to let people know that it's not all the things in social media, right? And if we do not correct that impression, uh, a lot of people will go away with misinformation. Okay, give us yes. a okay. Go ahead, please. Yes. So I would like to understand for you, um, the police officers on ground, constantly having to deal with arresting these people. What would you say the general um, trend or behavior is right now? Do you think that there are more young, educated people in this? Because there used to be a time we thought, oh, they had to be herdsmen from somewhere. But mm -hmm. are they exactly young the people, part of us, educated, you know, going to work on one side and then kidnapping on the other side, having families on one side? What group or what's the demographic of these people that do this um, act? Well, for this particular one, um, they are not graduates. This man 
who this uh, Ewa was a cleaner in the bank. So I wouldn't say that he has he has a very high educational qualification from a cleaner in the bank. And uh, the other partners or his other gang members are uh, just uh, local people like every other local person. But a couple of them are married. Himself is married. Uh, Emmanuel Ayase is married. So they have families. But they engage in crime. Mm. Interesting. I so, guess but generally, yeah. generally, you know, uh, the, the, the crime of kidnapping in Ayase particularly is being done by mystery, local mystery. Uh, they are not educated, they are not really have not gotten anyone. But that is not to say that it's not possible. But so far, so okay. I've not gotten somebody who. Thank you so much, sir. We just wanted to hear from you directly. Um, I guess I was going to add a bit to that question from Mariam, saying that do you think there are links to. Yeah, these are people that are used, these are the ones we catch, but are there, is there like um, um, a cabal that, that really sends out these guys out to go and kidnap? But those are questions for another day because we have to wrap up. Thank you so much, um, Commissioner, for joining us this morning to give us. Is there any other final update you want to give us on this case so that we know? Uh, well, it's it just to assure you that uh, we do the needful. Uh, there will be early conclusion of the investigations of that are quickly, expeditiously, expeditiously taking the court for judge. Right. That's all. Thank you so much, sir. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, move on to others. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. with us so many of you know we actually reside in eco sea sherry and we're minding our business and we're seeing billboards left right and center they're doing carnival they're doing something what is going on so we had to invite the mayoress herself princess samiat abolan lebada the mayoress of eco sea sherry local government lc to come and explain to us what is going on in this our neighborhood but they say you're doing carnival. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good to have you. So, and you look like you're very carnival ready right now. Yes, <laughs> because I'm already in the mood. What's yeah. going on? I must be sincere to you. You know, we have different kind of ethnics in our community. And, uh, you know, working, just working and working and working, I make dark a double at times. <laughs> and I just felt we should come around, we should come together. Uh, despite insecurity in the country mm. and a lot of things, religion, this and that in the country. But in Kosechari, we are very special. We speak in one voice and we, you know, we, the, there is this something that, you know, make us to come together yeah. every time. Yeah. We did it last year oh. that we, you know, we campaign, preach to our people that we must speak in one voice, mm. no matter what, if truly you're a resident of Kosechari. And this time around, we felt Election is coming around, and we wouldn't want anyone, you know, to hide under election and say, I'm going to do my own in a different way. And we just felt, as an ecosystemians, we must come around together. Ecosystemians. Fully <laughs> together. Ecosystemians, please go ahead, talk. <laughs> so I love the fact that this captures, you know, um, all ethnics, like you said, all other tribes, and your. Lagos is cosmopolitan anywhere. We know that there are different tribes around. But the idea, is it for just that, that inclusiveness, you know, how, how exactly are you bringing them on? Is, are they also members of staff within the civil service? Thank you, you very much. There's another thing I thought of. You know, we are blacks. We should be able to be proud of our culture. Yes. A lot of things have been forgotten. Yes. Mm. A lot of our traditional stuff, you know, the Oibos, they have come, they take, they've taken away all our gods that our forefathers normally use. 
as a power. Yes. And if you, if, you, if you ask me today, how can you remind ourselves of those things? Mm. How can you come together and tell the white people that we are black and we are proud yeah. of our color? Mm -hmm. So these are the brain behind it. And we thought, this is, that is why we named, you know, it's rethink on worldwide of the tourism. But we in Ecosystem rethink that our culture, not our religion. Mm. That is, we have, a, I mean, I'm a practicing Muslim, but yet, that does not make me to forget Your my culture. culture. Mm. Yeah. We must bring back that culture. culture. We must make sure, we, I mean, we remind our people of whom we are, mm. and where we are coming from, I mean, and what we are. Yeah. And uh, who are the people to ginger us? Yeah. As a grassroots person, I must be able, you know, to exhibit those things and right. their qualities. And as a woman, even in position, my woman must be different. Okay. I must make sure the woman, you know, Stand out. does it all. I love Man. it. I love it because this table, we're always pushing for making sure that we don't forget our roots and we should be proud of our culture. Can you tell us what exactly will we be seeing and on enjoying that on that day? On that particular day, <laughs> there's going to be a road parade on Friday, this fr coming Friday, from 10 o'clock to CMD, from local government to CMD. And it's going to be, you know, different kind of troops. Different people will wear different attire. Mm. People from Ekiti, from Igbo, from Benue, the Awusas, they will come in with in their different attire. So at their traditional fruit. And we'll do that parade from there too. Then we are governor, so we will now come by 1 p.m. Mm. And a lot of musicians like King Sonia De, uh, Pasuma, Obeseri, um, oh, and uh, King oh, uh, okay, it's called Peace um, Unity. Bella, Hugh Dot, and Shino Peter, and Oti, and many, many yeah. upcoming mm -hmm. artists. They will be coming. We did it last year, and I really worked for them. And uh, that is why we will have seen during the SRS, um, outside there, 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 there was no problem with uh, our people yes, in yes. Ukosichiri because. Our people, we are speak together yeah. and we speak in one voice. Mm. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, so, can you give us, because this, this is part of what they're going to be wearing, can you tell us what, what kind of other costumes are we going to see, see that will. Uh, uh, like, uh, you know, my, like me, the other one I did that, that they, they used for my. I made Yoruba, I didn't dress like a Yoruba lady. I just want to let people know, yes, I'm part of parcel of Calabar. There's another attire I wore on that, uh, oh, my post. So yes. Calabar, yes. then uh, different kind. Of, the, on that particular day, I might not put on this, but you see some people mm. that will be putting on. This is what I did last year. Okay, mm. okay, so, okay. and I, I Let's feel- Let's talk a bit about politics okay. a bit. So yes. how are you doing your grassroots politicking, the women? Mm -hmm. How are you bringing the youths together? How are you, how, how, how has it been? We spoke to you, I think last year when you became yeah. mayoress. It's been one year. Give us a, 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 just a sneak peek of what you've done so far in the last one oh, year. Thank you very, very much. You know, I'm a woman and I'm a mother. Mm. And I have this large ass that I must be able to accommodate everyone because I want a young boy. And the, the youth aspect of it is we have made them know to realize that they wake up from their you know, sleep. That look, as a youth, you still have a lot to do. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Don't think about that tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. But today, you must be part and parcel of what we are doing and not a constituency uh, uh, mm -hmm. nuisance. Don't allow people to use you during the election. A lot of people will tell you, because you're a youth, you should go. Come and put this, come and do that. When anyone, of course, call you, ask them, where is your first one? So that your first one will follow us mm. and do the rubbish stuff that. And these are the things that have made them know. And a lot of empowerment training. Mm. We do a lot of talk. You know, some people might not know the kind of person they are. Mm. That's a training I, you know, I did. I said, who are you? How can you find whom you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by the time they don't even know whom they have, yeah. where they are coming from, where they have, oh, what and what know. do you think you can do with mm. people? Like this, what we are doing, Carnival. We have there is another conference. Uh, uh, this thing we did. We just told the youth that look, you can do a lot in this because mm. tourism is like you know when you are moving from one place to another. Yeah. That you want to learn what they're doing there. 
and a lot of investors are coming, you could come, you know, as sales and showcase what you are doing. And you meet a lot of people that you have not met before. Right. By the time you interact with them, you would definitely. Let me just know throw in one fast question so we can yeah. run off. A lot of our young people, they are jack buying. What advice would you give them to stop them from jack buying? Um, uh, my advice to them is we will still not even stop, you know, talking to them this way. There's no way you could force them. Mm. There's no way. But we will continue to, to train them. them. We will continue to advise them. And with all this one we are doing, I think there's really changes even in our community. Mm. Mm. Okay, I think that's all we can take. Thank you so much. We wish you the best. So what day is the carnival? What time should we show up? What time, are, what time is it starting? What time is it ending? Tomorrow, yeah. will there be a mala? Uh, th yes, <laughs> there will. What day is it, ma? Uh, on the 30th of oh. this month. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is Friday. Friday. There's going to be parade from the local government to the CMD. And one, exactly 1 p.m., okay. we can start the program. Mm. Well His Excellency and other dignitaries. Where are the coming. CMD park? The oh, yeah. CMD. That big park over there. That big park. Oh, fantastic. So, so the security, protect The security you. aspect of it, you know. We are peaceful here. Shun Jemawa. Bon Jemawa. Bon Bwe, Tulati Shea. Everything. Is it yes. free? Amala, on point. Amala free, no. No, it's the free. entrance. To the, the entrance is free. Okay. okay. But yeah, we are, there's a raffle uh, draw that you will buy uh, a ticket of 200,000. You might win generator. You might win cooler. 200,000 naira. 200 naira. Ah. 200 naira tickets. 200 naira tickets. Oh. Okay. Said 200,000. Okay, 200 naira. 200 naira. Okay. You, you might win. win. You might win anything. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We have to we have to bring you on the show because you know you are our landlord. Mm -hmm. You cannot be doing something and we don't support you. So we have supported you like this now. To Thank tell you. you, tell everybody in Nico Sherry, come out on Friday and support the carnival. Entrance is free. Entrance is free. Entrance is free. You will meet all this. <laughs> My mother-in-law is from Ekiti. You're not in jail. Ah, Bogwele Mari. Everything. Not just go. Not Pandu. Pandu K. Correct. So women are there to pan for you. No well, problem. Thank you. Hey, that's all. Coming, I'm not passing that day. Uh, yeah. That's all <laughs> we can say. Thank you so Andretti. much, uh, <laughs> madam, for coming. It was a pleasure having you on the show. We're still going to bring you back to discuss work. Yes. Mini road, mini cleanliness, mini all those a things. Lot all those we have done what you've done, you're going to come and the real work. We're still yes. going to back to come and give us an update on what you've done so far in the last one year. That's going to break when we come back. Move on to other segments. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So last week, the Bauchi State Commissioner for Education, Mr. Aliyu Tilde, um, said that the government has concluded plans in separating male and female students in secondary schools. And why did he do this? He said, uh, he explained that the idea was to address the moral decadence which had become prevalent among students in secondary school. Now, the update on that story is that the boys of the secondary school came out yesterday to protest demanding that it should have been carried along with this decision. <laughs> and um, and this, is, this is a cause for concern because many parents are also worried about the, the moral decadence in our, in our schools. And what, what other critics are saying, is this the way? Do you throw the baby away with the bathwater? Do you, are there better ways of addressing these issues? Because these children, was, they have to have this co-curriculum. They have to have the co-education together. The idea is to have them to learn social skills by interacting both with male and female. So if you divide them, is that the right thing to do? That's our conversation today. You can join us. Call us on 081-270-53687-091-390-7694. You can also tweet to us at TVC. Can I please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. <laughs> What are your thoughts on this? There's two sides of the argument. So the commissioner is saying there's so much moral decadence in our society. These boys are sleeping with girls and they're having all sorts of things in schools. And it's, it's, coming, it's becoming um, un unacceptable, you know, in, 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 in that state. Others are saying that if your children are well-trained, we we've had schools where boys and girls 
went to school together and they didn't have that problem. So there are ways of going around this. What are your thoughts on the decision of the Commissioner for Education? Let me start with you, Mara. Okay, so um, I took the story yesterday and I think his fears are valid. Um, and um, first of all, also we need to, for context, Belchi State is in the north and we understand how conservative, you know, culturally and religiously we can be. I'm not saying everyone is Muslim, but culturally, you know, it's yeah. quite conservative. So there are some things also that is important to them, you know, how a girl carries herself up until she's ready for marriage. But he also mentions that it's worrisome, worrisome because they're at an age where they're experimenting. So he understands that that's the time. But he also says, so apart from that, they're also getting married quite early. Mm. So all the gains that they have, that they say they have acquired in encouraging children to go to school, encouraging girls to go to school, you know, their boys to go to school, the out of school children percentage is dropping. For them, parents will get scared and say, okay, if I send my child to school and the child ends up just okay. misbehaving, still, you know, getting married so early, what then is the mm. benefit? And to, um, in, in, in a way to stop that, you know, is to separate them. And I feel that that's the important first step to take. Mm. I mean, I went to an all-girls school for secondary school, and I went to a university where the boys were not allowed into the girls' hostel. If boys wanted to see girls, they would, you know, call us out and you go. So for me, I guess also being growing up in the north, it does not seem unusual for me. And it did not stop me from interacting with boys. We would meet in class, we would have a conversation. You know, there are other avenues where you could meet and, you know, get to know each other. Mm. There are spots where you can mm. still um, interact with each other. So, but in this case, it seemed to be much more severe. And I feel that it's severe because they have to take a quick first step, okay. right, me... which is you would not even interact on any mm. level. Right, but, me... you know, let me just finish. Mm. But, you know, the thing is the children have come out to to protest this mm. thing. And I feel that they are mis... What's the word now? It's not misled. It's, mm. they, they don't understand what they're doing. But we need... But there's one thing that they said, that you should have involved them in the conversation. Mm. And I think that that conversation would have happened. This is what is happening to children. And this mm. is how you're carrying yourselves. Mm. I hope that there was education on how they would have carried themselves okay, while we'll interacting with each other. I want to take the initial thoughts before we go deeper. Let me get your thoughts on this before we go deeper into all the other things. Um, I, I think, for me, and I'm not a conservative person, I think it's a good step. I think it's a good step because I, my niece, recently, I moved her, I got my brother to move her to an all-girls school because I saw what was happening in the mixed school. Mm, mm. And, you see... I'm not saying that it cannot happen in an all-girls school or right. in an all-boys school. Right. There can be decadence. But the fear is that a 13-year-old might get pregnant. You know, so if the governor is looking at that, because once you get pregnant at 13, I mean... It disrupts a lot of things. It disrupts a lot of things. I, I remember my um, late ex-husband wanted, wanted to take my daughter to a school where um, it was a mixed secondary school, and it was in Togo or Benin or somewhere like that. And th the boys' hostel was just across a corridor. Mm. was the one that divided the girls, the and, boys. girls and the boys' <laughs> hostel. I imagine like they just walk across the corridor. <laughs> the th girl, she was 13, she, she came out pregnant. Mm. She got pregnant at 13. And I was saying, you see, you see, mm. eh? you, you want my daughter to be pregnant but, at 13. But so, just, I, I, me, normally I do. I never agree with government. But let's but go back. One, let's go I back. Agree. Let's go back to the source. When you raise children, when children are properly raised and they know their boundaries, mm. you're a boy, I'm a girl, you know, we respect each other and they are raised such a thing in that way, they can grow up and they have the hormones burning. But because they've been raised in a way to respect and keep themselves and preserve themselves to a certain point, they're likely to listen to that. So do you think we should go back to the foundation? Of the of this, than just say divide them because dividing them doesn't solve the problem. I don't think. Okay, so I think the school is the government is doing what is within their powers. Mm. Just as Miriam said, it would have been you know something that they carried every party along. So it would have been a decision that you know they would have had continuous parents teachers um, association meetings. So parents too are aware of the problem and where they are lacking as uh, at parenting they would beef up or again uh, sit up at it. But for me, the, the, the protests is what made me change my mind. I didn't go to 
uh, a, a single girls, okay, for my primary school, a single girls school, a Catholic school. But for my secondary school, it was mixed. And university was mixed. I was raised here in Lagos. And I mixed with every kind of gender that, you know, I could possibly imagine. There are only two types of gender. No, no, no. I'm telling you, <laughs> when it comes to sex and I'm all of that, we saw, we saw the, oh, the, yeah, all the extremes <laughs> in secondary school, yeah. sadly. In secondary school where I went. And it was a decision, you know, formed from our backgrounds at home mm. that made us do differently. Yes. So I believe that parenting is the way to go. Mm. But then maybe government should start looking at the kids that they're talking about. We are no longer in 1991, 1993 uh, when I was in JS1. We, we are looking at kids who are constantly have quick links on, on social media, on their phones, their, fo their smartphones now. Before your parents' mind ever gets 10 steps, the child's phone has gone 1,000 steps ahead. These kids see a lot of things that, even if they were not in mixed schools, they would do, they would do what they want to do. In those days when we had single-sex schools, mm. some girls would find their way to an all-boys yes, school now. over the weekend. Exactly. Boys too will find their way and tell girls to yeah. meet them up. So a child who is determined to do bad will do bad. Yes. Mm. You know, but... I, what I cannot understand is that children, students who should be uh, focused on their education right now are protesting a government decision. <laughs> I just that, cannot understand that, is, that one. That, that is, yeah. Who, whoever cooks that idea into their head and push them on the Let road. Let me take this question. Carry me along. Carry you carry, to where? Carry you where, exactly? No. Let's take Chris. Carry carry along along is good. good morning, Chris from Abuja. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Morning, good morning. sir. Yeah, um, it's a very interesting topic. <laughs> and... Um, I must say the government are not really doing so much on this issue. So let's ask two questions. Now, have you looked at lesbianism? Have you also looked at the other one of uh, gay or whatever to the boys? That is true. Then another one. If you are separating these three, you separate them, you separate them, and end of the day, they get to the university. Are you going to separate them? Seriously, let's be factual. I, I grew up in Lagos, and all these um, separating uh, people, separating uh, students, doesn't really make sense. It won't stop ridiculous. It won't stop it at all. Exactly. Let's just be very factual with it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. So I'll go come to you, Mara, yes, because yeah. yes, yes, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say when they say um, it won't stop them, yes, they may still. But at least you have put in a barrier. Good. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. Taking a measure. Way, no, you, know, yes. you just, just uh, you have done you have done something. Yeah. Really, but, you know? but uh, whether that, that thing will be effective mm. is another big matter mm. entirely. Okay, and the way it was reported as of yesterday, it seemed to be widespread. Mm. So there's a difference between uh, people, children well, no. always find themselves, you know, if even all girls school mm. These things happen, but it will be it's one off. Mm. But when it's widespread, and I think an immediate action needs to be taken, like this one has been taken. Mm. But then it is not the answer, as you say. People will still find a way, and that is where um, the government has. And that's why I agree that government should have involved all stakeholders, even the students. You start you talking know, to it, them. It, sexual education. That's yes. that's what I mean by involving them. Not saying we're asking your permission. No, this, no, no. Amen. But we are having a conversation. This is what Amen. you're doing. You are a certain age this is what is happening to your bodies but if you do this this is where you end up it will affect your future affect your education those are the sort of conversations so that the children are aware whether we like it or not many children especially in the north there's an age you just feel that especially for girls i'm so about to get married mm -hmm. i want to be married you know so i always feel that there's a way we raise girl children like i want to meet a man and fall in love and be married so if you're not giving them the other benefits of the reason why you have to wait to finish your education right. They meet a guy, they like him. Please, can we go on, you know? Mm. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us. We're still discussing this matter that happened in Bauchi. And uh, there was a part of this that um, Maya mentioned earlier, which I thought was important. The fact that we're talking about Bauchi, it's a, it's a fairly conservative community and um, it, it's, it's majority Muslims. Now, when you consider that, you think of the liberty given to a young man because, you, hey, you got somebody pregnant, 
bring her as wife. You can you can have a, you know a few a few of those. And the fact that a, a little girl from the age of 12, 13 is already thinking marriage because many of them either some big man comes and picks a child up. You know, so these are things that they hear that happens that is fairly uh, normalized in this community. So when a, t a teenager is having this um, I'm trying to choose my words oh, correctly. No, Use this hormonal um, hype mm -hmm. going around within <laughs> in the secondary school, you know, and you the, the thing the, the 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 first thing you think of is just separating them. For me, is that really the solution, or we're just still um, just, 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 yeah, just, just packaging it with something, okay. yeah. you know, the real because the real source. Issue. There, are, there are bigger issues here. Yeah. There's the liberty a young man feels. And listen, I can I can have you. I can have you, and nothing's gonna happen. If you get pregnant, oh well, join the queue. So, so, wow. so just as I said earlier, it's silly just a measure that the state governments are looking within their own means to do. Mm. But you know, we talked about a parent meeting, as say, a parent a teachers association meeting, where there's constant reorientation. So the schools. The schools, the government can then compel the schools to have a counselling and I remember that in secondary school, we had a counselling and guidance department. And they would never, they, well, they didn't counsel, I didn't get to be counselled one-on-one. -on -one. But they would come out every time, they would bring these um, uh, NGOs to come and counsel the girls on how important our bodies were. I love the fact that those counselling even started in primary school. Yeah. I remember that in primary school, we thought about our bodies and how important it was to be away from the other gender. So it is. I'm not certain it. they do that in these schools, though. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, if they do, I'm sure the government know, will not have to react like this. I don't think there's any effect of that education. if it happens. But I, I agree education. that it should start from the parents, mm -hmm. not just it's not the school. school. It's the parents have to start counseling. Look, I, I remember when I, I was very young, when my mother, when they were showing a program on drugs. My mother would call all of us mm -hmm. and make us watch it. Yeah. What happens to you when you take mm -hmm. drugs? So, of course, you, when you see people like that, you will be afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they are showing you the result Results. of this. Yeah. So, parents do play a large role. and important role in, you in know, this. the children. Let's give you comments on social media so we yeah, can wrap me, up with this. Yeah. I, I have this. Um, okay. Don Robert. Dan, sorry. Okay. You want to go? Yeah. Don Anthony says, I sat with these people in my secondary school who was sexually attracted to his own sex. The boy didn't get no help, but the school was using him to cash out money during cultural meetings. Gladys Oyebo says, absolutely correct. Let sex education be introduced in our schools. Mm -hmm. Dada Olagoke says, if you separate them now, will you separate them in university? Same elite will send their kids abroad in mixed schools. Our so-called leaders should be productive. Okay, Dolani Robert says, the protesters about separation of female and male block is a priori priority highly misplaced. This is not one of their problems. It could have been a thoughtful protest if they had protested they about the quality of education they are receiving instead of, um, of what they did. Um, Her Tony says, for me, the government are only pushing them to find out more, more to know why government put the ban. This will result in them more of those things mm -hmm. government never wanted them doing. The result will be so bad. Nevertheless, most of them marry so early, even at 13. Yeah. Malam Mileko said, no, to me, it's not absolute solution, but part of it. More needs to be done by parents mm. through upbringing and government through law. Isn't it also curious that the girls were not marching alongside them to say, don't stop the ban? They were like, thank, thank you, you for separating us. Separate us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, as, 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 um, as this may sound, it's really, it's a very serious matter. I know we might laugh about it, but the truth is that these are young girls and young boys, mm. and they, they have their whole life ahead of them. And um, we can't pretend that even those of us that went to secondary school, yes, they, they did sexual education. And with all the sexual education, there were some girls still getting doing some things at the back. There were some boys still. So we still... But in number. We, yeah, in number. Mm -hmm. But now it's more prevalent. It's more yeah. widespread. I get mm -hmm. that. But I think... But um, even in the same sex schools, they still get up to... Yeah, yeah, so, mm. so it goes days. back to the foundation of these mm. children. That's right. really the parenting is really the real, the real um, solution to this problem. But, uh, but either way, the government has done what they can do to help, but the real solution to that problem is parenting, and hopefully the parents get the feedback and do the needful when it comes to these teenagers. When we come back, we're going to take a break now. We're going to um, invite our guest from La Mata to know exactly what's going on in that sector. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mm. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. Join us on the show now is the Managing Director, CEO of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority. That's La Mata Engineer, Mrs. Abimbola Akiajo. Welcome to the show. She'll be much. speaking on how her agency is implementing the State Strategic Transport Master Plan, which has six rail lines, one monorail, 14 BRT corridors, and over 20 water routes. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to have this conversation because we hear a blue line, red line, yellow line, pink line. We don't even know what it means. Mm -hmm. There's no pink. I know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> just saying you know, being so facetious. We, I need, we need a clarity on that. Mm -hmm. and, and then, well, I'll come to the waterways, because I'm really, really particular about the waterways. But let us start with, what is all these lines? Colors. And where are, they, where are they starting and ending? How many are they? First? And when is this going to start, Seth? And where are the colors? OK, so thank you very much for having me. And I am always glad to come and talk about the rail lines, because okay. it's something that Lamata is very, 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 very proud to be doing. The okay. Lagos State government is pushing yes. that we have railway in Lagos. And we must also note that Lagos will be the only subnational that would have built a rail line mm. anywhere, mm. because it is usually in the purview of a, 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 a country's yeah. um, bucket of things to do. So what, what do we have? Right now, we're building the blue, and we're building the red. So the blue line, you ask where, where they're starting and where they end. Yeah. So the blue line, for instance, starts from Okokomaiko and it goes all the way to Marina. If you know that corridor, you can think about the traffic that sits there right. on a regular basis. Okay. So when we are able to transport people en masse, mass transportation, we will ease transportation or traffic in that area. When um, is it starting, sorry? So we will complete all infrastructure by the end of this year. Oh. We will begin testing and commissioning from January. Okay. So by the first quarter of 2023, we will have passenger operations. Oh, fantastic. On the so we've done blue. Next one. So we're also doing red at the moment. Red, okay. And red is going from uh, Agbadu all the way to Marina. That's the full length of it. So let me go back to the blue line. In building any rail system, you would start them and do them in phases. So when we say that the blue line goes from Okokomaiko all the way to Marina, the first phase is only what we're building at the moment, and that first phase is from Mal 2 to Marina, mm -hmm. which is about half of what it is, of okay. what the full length will be. Okay. So we will be doing the uh, commissioning of the Mal 2 to Marina, Marina. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the blue line is, just to clear the air so yeah. that we don't... So Okokomaiko will start they, sometime they later? Yes. Oh, well, fantastic. So, so Okokomaiko will start... Mm -hmm. After we have completed the blue, we have tested, we have started to operate okay. the first phase of it. Now, this is a normal thing. Nowhere in the world would you build a 27-kilometer railway in one go. Yeah. Okay. Usually, you would do it in phases. phases. And in fairness, Lamata has been saying this till we're blue in the face, that we're building it <laughs> in phases. Everything that we say, we have never claimed that we're building from Opokumaiko to Marina. We have always claimed that we're building from mile two to Marina. For now. Okay. Okay. Now, going to the red line is the same. So the red line is a 37 kilometer rail that goes from Agbadu all the way to Marina. Well, yet again, we're doing the it's first phase of it. Okay. And that would be from Agbadu all the way to Oingbu. Okay. That is the first phase and that's what we're building now. Now what we're doing is, um, the uh, governor, when he came in, looked at it, and the government has been looking at the red line. In fairness, red line is probably one of the most lucrative lines in terms of ridership. Okay. When you look at that corridor, that is the one that probably has the highest uh, demand. So is that why it's a red line? Because it has a lot of um, uh -huh. um, co um, commuters or...? I wish I could agree with you, but no. no we okay. just chose random pictures. <laughs> okay. <laughs> random colors. <laughs> okay. So the thing for it is that... In starting, one of the things, when you say La Mata, we are uh, the metropolitan area. We mm -hmm. are planning transportation for the metropolitan area. And one thing Lagos is doing now is that we're recognizing the suburbia of Lagos. And that extends into Ogun State. Mm. So some would say Agbado actually is in Ogun State. Mm. But we know that a lot of people come from there mm. into Lagos. Yes. And that's why this line has mm. gone all the way mm. into Agbado. So Agbado to Yingbo will definitely start from first quarter next year. Definitely. Others will then come in as, as we as, go. Yes. Okay, so when they now arrive, sorry, sorry Nima. So I, I take that, that train. When I get to Marina, what happens? Is there, is there a BRT waiting for me? Do I have to take a bike? Do I, yes. what's, what's the next step? Okay, so 
One of the things that exists in our master plan, we have what we call interchanges. Mm -hmm. Marina is actually an interchange. Okay. And it's an interchange that has every mode of transportation that Lagos is able to deploy oh. in it. Okay. So there's water transportation, there's road, and there's rail. Within the road, I have the BRT, like you say, there's a BRT terminal at Marina. Okay. There's standard route buses, and then there's uh, first and last mile buses. So there's every other mode that you can utilize. In fact, we're also encouraging and we're implementing some non-motorized transport within Marina. So mm. we're encouraging walking. We're also <laughs> encouraging um, so cycling. Like a Paddington kind of station that connects everywhere. Yeah, Paddington, Victoria. Everybody that mm -hmm. connects yes. everybody. So there. you can come in there and you, um, you will be able to so connect okay. other modes of transportation. And when the red line gets to Marina, yes. you will also be able to change onto the red line. So a lot of our rail systems... When the red line gets to Marina... When the blue line? Or you no, mean when, when the red line gets to Marina, Marina you're going so to change to what? To the blue line. To the blue line. The blue line. Yes. Yes. Now, does this... It goes back and forth. The, to fro, yeah. The, to, they go back and forth. It's not yes. just one way. Oh, yes. They go back mm -hmm. and forth. And do they stop... Do they have stops? Stops? So we have stations, obviously. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. So we yeah. have, for the, for the blue line, we have in total 11 stations. But the ones we're building now is from Mount 2. So we have Mount 2. I have Alaba. We have Igomo. We have National Theatre. And we have Marina. So okay. those five stations will be available. Okay. And each stop, I can change over to oh, other you places? Can, you can get down station. out of um, Mile 2 and go to Igomo, for instance, and... Decide mm. that you are taking a bus. Yes. Okay, so for the blue line, which is under my own um, area, I have noticed that, you know, the deadline has continuously been shifted. And now that you're mentioning that the mile two to Marina, which is the one we can see, mm -hmm. yeah, I still passed there yesterday, is the one we can see is what has been completed. And that's what you're looking to start early next year. That's correct. How has funding have affected this project? It's been almost how many years now, 10 years. So how has funding continued to affect this project and how do you hope to get more funding so, so that we have, completed. we are sure of, you know, completion? Okay, let's talk about the good part, which is funding for completion. It exists already. Okay. It's already okay. been done and we have paid the contractor. Okay. So the completion is not in doubt. Okay. Mm. Um, and that's the good part. Now, when you talk about um, things that have you know, sort of uh, shifting goalposts. It is. It goes back to what I said earlier that Lagos is the only um, subnational. subnational that is building a rail. Every, and I remember when the World Bank came to us, they kept looking. How do you want to build a rail system off your balance sheet? Nobody does it. <laughs> but Lagos governments have always been audacious. They, when you look at what Lagos says, when you look at the uh, population and what happens here, the only thing you can do is think about rail. Yeah. And in that sense, previous governments have been using their monies to sort of try and complete. But what um, uh, this governor has done is to apply for the DCRR funding, which is funding for infrastructure with the banks. And they have been very um, responsive and they have given us the funds. And that's how come we can say we, we will complete. And one thing I must say is that this this year funding is available to all. CBN have come to the site a number of times. They've been very impressed with what mm, we have done. Yeah. And that has, there's nothing to hide. Everything is very visible. And CBN and the banks, they audit and they look at what so we're doing. Let me just say, I heard you say. So it's available to all states. So if you, well, it's available. It's well, I mean, it's not. I'm not a financier. I know, I'm just saying that it's available. So just yeah. 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 Watch yeah. Well. You can tell the governor. You have to go and apply just, for it. Just, <laughs> just as a follow-up on the same blue line, uh, blue line. So construction is going on on the roads, yes. on by you know the Badagri Express roads. And then you see that they're done. Then Lamata project just sort of starts in the middle of the completion. When we're about to celebrate, the free roads, they start to do... I'm talking about the mile two, because, you yeah. know, when they started to build the, sta the station, they, the landing one, and the BRT section of it, I was like, ah, why didn't they work in tandem, in synergy yeah, with yeah. this, so that at once, you know, this works. And so people are also wondering now that if that mile two rail starts, or they eventually do the mile two to Okoko end, the roads will be taken over again, and it will become a mad place for the tankers and all the different right. uh, businesses that, you know, that this accommodates. Okay, so if you look at the blue line, you will notice that it is in the middle of the carriageway like mm -hmm. you described, the Lagos Badagri Expressway. Um, the Lagos Badagri Expressway is also being built by the Ministry of Works, and they have, it's a 10-lane highway. That's what the what 
part of that 10 million says that they have dedicated the median part of it, all a matter, to implement its rail lines. Now, from where we are standing, we're actually working in tandem with Ministry of Works. I would say that we have been working with them in tandem for over the years, and that's why they are not complete. They won't be done if we're not done, and we can't be done if they're not done. Um, they also, I believe, will be done end of this year. Now, going forward beyond what is now happening is that so long as they build the road and they leave us the corridor, we don't have to mess with the road. So long as the corridor for the rail is there. And the good thing about it is also that going back to Okokomaiko, the majority of that road, uh, rail will be at grade. When I say at grade, it will be on the ground. If you see what we've done from mile two to Marina, mm. when you get to Igomo, you start to rise. So all of that is elevated, but the majority of going back is at grade, so it'd be easier to um, work right. with the road okay. and without causing... Yeah, when you said the red line okay. will start? Or it's first quarter end, next year? First quarter next year. The red line, not the blue line? No. As well. So we're very oh, busy. Oh, as well. So the two of them are starting, starting simultaneously? Yes, yes, they will. So there's something that's always bothered me about, you know, being, tra being traffic in Lagos is the tankers. Mm -hmm. the containers and i wonder if the this would mean that we'll have less of them on the roads and more of them on the rail okay so if we talk about freighting mm. understand that we are an urban rail the responsibility of la mata is about people thank you moving mass movement of people mm. but speaking to freighting that will be utilizing the lagos um, Ibadan rail lines. Okay. That is designed for, uh, for um, okay. freight yes. okay. uh, haulage. Mm -hmm. So that will happen on that rail. And we also are actually sharing. So when you talk about the red line, we're sharing the track that the uh, National uh, NRC has yeah. built or Federal Ministry of Transport has built. And we're sharing it all the way to their station, which is Lagos Station. Mm. Um, in Ebute mm, and okay. then we, will, we are building our own tracks from Ebute Meta all the way to Ebute. Right. Okay. So that's Let me talk about the waterways because I'm, we have very little time left. I, I was hearing somewhere that we'll be having bus stops on the waterways and I'm thinking, how is that possible? So mm, I can go from point A, like it's not like right now that we have really long stretches. Mm. Are we really going to have bus stops in the, on, the, on the waterways okay. or just just... So let me just say, Lamata has a responsibility to plan waterways but we don't implement. That is Lazwa. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, it's not my area of jurisdiction. Oh, okay. All right, let me Okay, so let you. me quickly uh, come to the issue of compensation mm -hmm. and how, you know, the, for this project, of course, some properties would have to go. Yeah. So how have Lamata handled compensation? I read sometime about one property in Yaba and how they were having issues. And then because of the Badagri Expressway, some people are still claiming they've not been compensated. Families are, you know, are still negotiating with government. So how... How are you doing this? Okay, so the, the, the red line project, we have compensated everybody. We have um, over 5,000 people have been compensated on the red line project. And we have done this in the space of less than two years because there was just this need to complete this project. And everybody that we have displaced Lagos State would proudly say that we're the first state that would not only pay the owners of properties, we have paid tenants to move out of tenanted property and also paid the owners of the property did, just to they facilitate. Move? They did. Just to facilitate the movement. the movement and also the implementation process. Now, and I know that when they were doing the blue line, the... the issue they had at the time was that everybody, and it is not at the time, it is even now, even with the red, you had to demonstrate your ownership. You can't just ask for monies to be paid because yeah. everybody gets audited. Every, we all need to be able to explain how you Why have you done. Mr. Jones. Yes. Yeah. So the majority of the people that were paid, and, the, and I remember then that there were compensations made, but the one thing everybody that wanted to claim compensation had to do was prove your ownership. So I don't know what the particular issue is, mm. but I know that compensations were paid on the Let's talk about BRT, 14 corridors. Mm. And do you have enough BRT buses? Because there was a time that we had these blue buses that came mm -hmm. in from somewhere, and then we don't, I don't see them again. It's just like they disappeared, or they've not been 
uh, put on the roads. What's the update on that? Do you have enough buses to, for, for, for this, or do we still need to look for more buses to bring into the country? Okay, so right now we have about 1,500 buses that are running, and I'm talking high-capacity okay. buses, high-capacity, medium-capacity buses that are running on not just the BRT routes, but also standard routes. So we have buses on the BRT routes, but we also have buses that just run around in mixed traffic. Um, to say we have enough buses, I would not say that. But that is where we have started from. And what government has tried to do is to say, I've put my skin in the game. Let private sector come and work with us. Okay. And a number of them have come. I ha we have companies that have come. And we're looking that come next year, we will have a number of private sector bring buses into. Will they have to have the same color? Because I, can't, I see red, I see blue. I'm thinking, which is, which is Lagos okay. State's own? So where we are headed yes. is to have regulated transportation. Okay. public transportation. So that means that if you are going to be regulated by LAMATA, because that is what LAMATA is, mm. apart from everything else that we do implementing, we're also the regulator for public transportation. Right. So in that regulation, there must be standardization in color. Okay. So people who would come to us and be regulated under LAMATA would have to have the blue the and white Are you in charge of last ride as well? Um, the lag ride. Right, yeah. Lag ride. No. Oh, that's because another... that, is, um, that is Ministry of Transportation. That is like an e-hailing system, isn't it? Okay. So then this, this is the ministry. automated thing that they used to pay in the bus. The card. Uh, card. What's it called? The card. Carry card. Yeah, the carry card. I mean, because now, my like, estate, they're trying to implement. I'm thinking, are you Lamata? Are you, are you implementing it within this one? But what, 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 what's the card? I mean, uh, how sustainable is that, especially when people want to come in to invest in this, to have those automated things? Or can you, is there, is there other ways, is there ways for payment? No, the, the only way you would pay now is to use the carry card. card. Right now, as we speak, we have over 2 million carry cards out there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So the, it has actually gone, and people now understand it. Carry card came into uh, play just over um, circa two years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And it has been very effective. And the good thing about carry card is that it was designed and, and, and built by young uh, tech Techies in Nigeria. Oh, really? Young, two young lads who have worked with Lamata over time, wow. and then they are the ones who developed it. Mr. Yes. Governor is always very proud of them. Are you serious? <laughs> so they have so like the Oyster card, you just, you, yes. you just click it on? You just you bring your card, you load it at the terminal or wherever. We're now implementing that you can actually load it at, at shops using uh, wow. USSD. There's wow. so many ways you can load, load it. it. And when you get on the bus, you tap, and it takes the oh, value. Wow. And it, what are you guys feeling like? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a question on Twitter. So Andrew is asking that uh, the monorail in, in Lagos, how is it going to work yeah. when there's no electricity, adequate electricity? And also he's asking, how, is, there, is there plans to extend from Marina to Lekki on the blue line or any yeah. of these lines? Okay, so even the blue line will be electrified. Mm -hmm. So oh. it's going to be the third we light. Hmm. We are building our own. Yet again, Lagos is aware of what we need to do. So we're working with a... Um, <laughs> and see, that's where you do see. That's where we have to put question mark. Because one train stopped Lagos in Nigeria one time like this. No, the there was no diesel. Was there was no diesel. They're rolling diesel. Yes. Ah, that's yeah. diesel now. So we're saying that... The so Lagos there's not so many train, different no. ways so we can... So national grid will not affect it. Collapse of we that. will have national grid and we will have our backup. A hundred percent. We have a UPS system that says that my train will not go down for one second. Okay. You cannot carry people and not have a plan in place that ensures that your rolling stock will always move. Ah, because if it breaks down, we'll be hmm. stuck in the middle of the... We don't have the bridge. We'll be the first thing. Oh, ah, I'm happy that you have a backup, which is a good so thing. So what, it will yeah. just, so if, if the light goes, it will just... just Instantly, it's like yeah. a UPS yeah. system. Oh, wow. they have to so it, it, well done. We're looking forward to the first quarter next year. I mean, I can't wait to have that red blue line going around. Yes. Are you going to come to our side, like this area, this side? We're not even your we're plaza at all. No, you are. This Koshofer area. You we, want to we have a purple line. Purple line is yes, coming. Yes, oh, purple wow. line is coming. Um, so the green have... line, which is what um, Nimat was asking, that somebody mm. asked on the... Yes. The green line goes from Marina to Lekki. 
Mm. Ah, okay. green light. So we, we're well connected. Don't they, worry. Banana, very Vegas soon. Is well okay, connected. fantastic. Well done, well done. Okay. Yeah, That's going to break. That is all we can Malay. take on the show. YK. I love it. Don't want to. I believe it's a good state. It's a good state. That's what we can take. I like Bado. It's a good state. I like Bado. It's a good state. It's a good state. It's a good state. Why are you discriminating? Why are you discriminating? Come and bring it to TV6 so I don't have to be in traffic for two hours. Please, talk to your governor. Don't talk to our governor. has started out us. Please don't talk to your governor. That's all we can Take, they said there's DSR, yeah, we can not give you loan, talk about for infrastructure. <laughs> so go to see if you can collect loan for infrastructure. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you very much.